Hey what's up folks, this is Phil Meyer. This video will walk you through the series of side quests in Motoya's Cave in Final Fantasy XIV. Like usual, I'll cover some of the story, and if you need help with something specific, please use the timecodes in the video description. You'll reach Motoya's Cave as part of the main story quest in Heaven's Word. You can kick off this series of side quests by speaking with Cyril Rogo. He's one of Motoya's frog companions. Cyril will start you off with the first quest called Cyril Rogo's Common Life. This task is easy enough, Cyril will task you with defeating insects which are feeding on Matoya's herbs outside of the cave. If you're watching this video because you need some help, this quest isn't why you're here. Return to Cyril after defeating the insects and he'll be very grateful. Cyril will confide in you that he's concerned that if he doesn't become more useful, Matoya will eventually cast him aside and return him to being a regular frog. He wants your help in finding out what Matoya's desires are so he can better help out. He asks that you start by speaking to the three brooms inside of Matoya's cave. The brooms all agree to help if you help them first. Each one will give you a quest that requires finding a specific object in Dravinia. You can pick up all three quests and I'll explain each one separately, but you can complete them all together. The self-possessed broom asks that you find the tiniest bridge in Dravinia. Towards the western edge of the map, you'll find a fallen log. When you walk near it, you'll recognize that it could be used as a bridge. Climb onto the log to inspect it, after which you can return to the self-possessed broom to complete this quest. The statuesque broom has a desire to see pure untainted water. Again, towards the western side of the map, you can follow a stream up from the lake to find the untainted spring. Interact with the spring to acquire the pure water. You can then return to the statuesque broom with the water. The broom is very grateful, but still wants to see the world's most pure water, which cannot be acquired from any spring. Target the broom and perform the cry emote to shed pure tears. The broom will be wowed and you'll finish this quest. The straightforward broom wants to see a signpost for ethereal travel, which he describes as sparkly, glowy, and angularly. There are actually two of these signposts that you can find. The first is again to the western side of Dravinia. Look for the fallen signpost and broken etherite crystals. The second location is towards the east. You'll actually come right across it as you proceed in the main story towards a required dungeon. Whichever crystal you find, inspect it and then return to the broom to complete the quest. After all of that effort, none of the three brooms really have any knowledge as to what Matoya's desires may be. Return to Sero empty-handed and he'll tell you of a fourth broom that he knows of. This will start the quest, the magic word. Sero thinks the fourth broom may know something, but Matoya keeps it hidden away. There's an incantation that will summon the broom, and he thinks that one of the three brooms may at least know this. Talk to the three brooms again, and you'll learn that the incantation is the name of what is dearest to Matoya. One of the brooms claims that it doesn't know what's dearest to Matoya, but does know what she hates the most. She claims that Matoya hates Ishtola the most. How did the broom come to this conclusion? It's because Matoya never speaks Ishtola's name. With some insight, one can deduce that the brooms don't quite understand how emotions work, and Ishtola is actually what is most dear to Matoya. You'll learn the location of the fourth hidden broom, which is towards the east at the bridge landing. At the specified location, say Ishtola's name, and the fourth broom will appear underneath the bridge. Talk to the broom and you'll learn that the reason it was hidden away is because it safe keeps the memories of Ishtola. Return to Sero with this information and he'll quickly deduce that he has nothing to offer Matoya. He can hardly become Ishtola and satisfy her desires. Continue speaking with Sero and he'll explain that he's resigned to his fate. He feels he has nothing to offer Matoya and will soon be transformed back into a regular frog. Before that happens, he asks that you help make the wetlands safer for him, as Opkins in the area have been preying on his kind. You'll need to head outside the cave once more towards the north, and you can defeat three Opkins. They're located as indicated on the map. With the wetlands a little safer, return to Sero. He'll express his appreciation, but he's still a little down in the dumps. You'll need to use the cheery mote on him, and you'll proceed to the next part of the quest. Sero will be rallied by your actions, and he's not quite ready to give up yet. He's determined to learn Matoya's desires and earn his keep, but he asks that you speak with her first to soften her up a bit. Do so, and Sero will express his desires to Matoya. 
Matoya is bemused and explains she has no intentions of returning Saro to his regular form. She explains how her actions in life have led her to living in this cave with her companions, and she's now an old woman approaching the end of her life. She hardly has any desires, but if Saro is so eager to please, Matoya does have a task for him. She asks Saro that on the day she dies, he close her magical eye and retrieve her hidden broom to be by her side. Saro, now having a purpose, is overjoyed. He's excited to be able to serve his mistress and expresses great gratitude towards you. This ends the quest and concludes this series of side quests. But in conclusion, what have we learned here? Matoya knows that she's nearing the end of her life, and she's lived in isolation for a good part of it. She's created companions from the frogs and the brooms to try to help fill a void in her life. But as you may have gleaned from talking with all of them, they are hardly capable of providing her with the type of companionship that she so desires. Matoya was Ishchola's mentor, and as one can infer, a motherly guardian in many ways. She's proud of Ishchola and misses her, but she knows that Ishtola needs to fulfill her role in the world. Matoya's greatest desire is just to find peace, and her greatest possession is the memories that she's created with Ishtola. If you stuck around to the end of the video, really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. If you consider hitting that like button on your way out, I'd really appreciate it. Take care, everybody.